Welcome back. Today's topic is problems on market clearing plans. In the last video lecture, we have discussed about how market clearing plans will be determined. So, I hope that in this video lecture, when we come across different models of determining the market clearing price, I hope that by the end of this video lecture, you will be able to compute market clearing price for a given scenario. Now, we will go back to the problem number one. As already said, when you encounter a problem, what happens is, uh, See, this is the information which you will be receiving when you are uh, going through a pool. See, it is a day head market and the independent system operator has received bids from participants. There will be different participants as we have already discussed. There are now four participants A, B, C, D and they have uh, given you the bids for a specified time period. Now, let us suppose I will take it as slot number one. The bids are provided below. The energy supply has been mentioned with the positive sign and the energy demand has been represented with a negative sign. So what he is asking, sketch the demand and supply curves and determine the market clearing price and the market clearing volume. And the amount of electricity, both supply and demand mentioned in the table has the units of megawatts. Now, see here. Now, this is the way how bids will be submitted or different price plans. Now, if you carefully see, this is the price plan. This is the yeah. This is the participant number A, and he is see if you carefully see this is the amount of electricity which he is providing, ready to trade. Plus indicates generation, so he is ready to trade in, which means he is a seller. Then he is ready to trade in hundred megawatts at whatever may be the price. And coming to B, he is just like me. If the price is too high, then he is ready to sell 200 megawatts. If the price goes down, then automatically he wants to reduce his uh, generation. If the price is very low, instead of selling, he wants to buy the electricity and use, he may use it as a storage. Okay, these indicate the demand because we carefully see minus. C is just like a discount, I think. He is expecting a constant demand irrespective of the price and D is another person just like B where he is only a seller of electricity and his selling profile if you carefully see it is varying with respect to the market clearing price. Now let us suppose these are the bits which have been received in an auction for a specific slot how to draw the supply and demand curves. The first and foremost step when you receive this type of bits is nothing but if you carefully see for every price some people are selling, some people are buying, right? So what you will do is nothing but there at this price point of 4 rupees. Now if you carefully see, there are 3 sellers and the sum of them is called as an accumulated supply. And there is one buyer which we call it as an accumulated demand. In this case, what is accumulated supply? It is 500 megawatts and the accumulated demand, if you carefully see, it is 150. Minus indicates a demand, plus indicates a supply. Now similarly here, the accumulated supply is 100, 150 and 200 which makes it 450 whereas accumulated demand is minus 150. So for every price scenario, we will be calculating the accumulated demand and accumulated supply. In this case, if you carefully see what is accumulated supply, only one positive and accumulated supply is 100 and accumulated demand is 300. So like this, we will draw a curve. net supply, what we call it as an accumulated supply and this is accumulated demand. This is accumulated supply and this is accumulated demand. Once you got these things, you will be drawing a curve between, this is the price actually. So price versus supply, this will give supply curve. Whereas this and this will give you demand curve. Now I have drawn this thing. See, this is the supply curve, price and volume of electricity and this is the demand curve. Now if you carefully see this intersection things. This is the MCV and this is here MCP. So what is the market clearing price? It is somewhere around 
two pi or two point two like this. And uh, what is the market clearing volume? It is somewhere around two ten to two point two megawatts. This is the way how you will be determining the demand and supply curves. And how see this is MCP is somewhere around two point four, whereas MCV is somewhere around two seventeen. The intersection which we have seen. Now, in some cases where you will be having, you will be see this is a single auction market where the independent system operator has received the supply bids only from the three generators. So he has received only supply bids for a specific time period of the following day. The bids are provided below. All the generations mentioned below or in megawatts. Determine the market clearing price for the following cases of forecasted demand, which means the demand has not been mentioned. But there is a forecast of a particular amount of demand. This is what he is saying. So now let us determine how market clearing price for these scenarios. Now, see, this is what they have mentioned. This is the data which has been given for us. Okay, this up to here the data has been given for us. Now, based upon this, what I am doing is nothing but I am computing what is the accumulated supply, or what I call it as a net generation. So based upon that, so the summation of all these things will give me accumulated supply. So I have maintained that and I will draw the curve between accumulated supply and the price, which I call it as a supply curve. See, so this is a supply curve. Once I draw it, so I do have different forecasts of demand. So let us suppose that the demand is 220 megawatts. I will mark this point here 220 and I will draw the curve here. This is my 220 megawatts curve. And this is my 300 megawatts curve and this is my 500 megawatts curve. So the intersection of these things, if the forecasted demand is 220 megawatts then the MCP will be somewhere around 1.4. If the forecasted demand is 300 then the, it will be somewhere around 2.6. If the forecasted demand is 500 then it will be somewhere around 4. So this is the way how I will be determining the MCPC. This is the concept. So I hope now you are able to compute MCP for different case studies which will be given to you. And this is a problem you are supposed to work at home on this problem. Okay. Thank you and these are the additional information.